Hi everyone, it's Father John Barry, and it's uh, Lent. It's the fourth week of Lent. We're on Wednesday, March the 30th. And through the cross, to the Paschal mystery of Christ, to, the, to Easter, to the glory. Let us pray the colic for today. O God, who reward the merits of the just and offer pardon to sinners who do penance, have mercy, we pray, on those who call upon you that the admission of our guilt may serve to obtain your pardon for our sins through Christ Jesus, our Lord. Amen. I notice the readings are uh, a bit long for the daily mass. And, uh, and so the gospel today, uh, they actually give you a choice, um, John 5 or John 9. But John 5 is my father is at work until now, and so I am at work. Jesus is trying to show that while we are not experiencing the Father directly in his perfect kingdom, in his perfection, in that fellowship, we are experiencing the Father through Jesus, that they're not separate. Holy Trinity are not separate gods. It's, it's the Son proceeding from the Father, the Spirit proceeding from the Father, the Son. And so the, the, Jesus is speaking about the Father and himself uh, in the gospel today. But uh, my father's at work and so am I. So we're glad that the Lord is at work. And who's he doing work with? He's doing work with us. And for those of you that are going through this booklet, uh, we can go to look at uh, the Wednesday uh, journal entry you make, okay? And it's page 125 in this book, okay? And uh, the author, Father Mark, starts us off with something from Deus Caritas Est, that would be uh, a writing of Pope Benedict the Sixteenth, when he said, we have come to believe in God's love. In these words, the Christian can express the fundamental decision of their life. Being Christian is not the result of an ethical choice or a lofty idea, but the encounter with an event, a person, which and who gives life a new horizon and a definite decisive direction. Um, so the father in the prodigal son story is the, the definite direction is, no, you're not going to be a servant. You're not going to be a laborer. You're not going to be a nobody. You're not going to be a person everybody's kind of ashamed of and all your past is dragged up. Rather, you're going to be my son again. Uh, so, uh, so he's going to live in the property with the father. I, um, all about all his former inheritance and everything. Again, that doesn't matter. It's the love. It's the love of the Father and the Son, the Son to the Father. And we're thinking it's going to take a while for the, for the other son to love his brother because uh, he doesn't understand this kind of love. And, of course, that would be today people who, um, who really don't understand, you know, a, a radical love of Christianity and they don't understand why people would, would love or believe that way or act that way. But it's, it's because you're moved. You're moved by what, who God is. And you realize that He's been that way for you. And that you want then likewise to share some love. So when we hear in our Father prayer that we are uh, to forgive others as we are forgiven, well, you could also put the word love in there. We could love with God's mercy the way that God has loved us with His mercy. So I I was looking back in my life a bit, uh, thinking of the father and son relationship uh, that I had, and uh, and I was just pondering, um, you know, uh, my my father was a very very outgoing, strong personality, and um, sometimes uh, I, I did not want to be like him. Uh, I, I thought that he was sometimes a little embarrassing. Um, and if you understand, like, if you could take Dick Van Dyke, the character, Archie Bunker, Fred Flintstone, Donald Trump, and Ronald Reagan, and maybe uh, Coach George Allen. Everybody said he looked like Coach George Allen of the Redskins back then. That was my father. <laughs> and, uh, and sometimes I remember that he was, he was such a, uh, a social draw for so many people that he didn't get, all, didn't get all that I needed from him. 
it, it was like I had to get in line sometimes with other people uh, and sometimes he was out of the house um, so one of the things I tried to do as the son was to, to do things so my father was a football coach so I tried out for the football team and made it I was the smallest person on the football team I didn't start I was on special teams and things like that I also was struggling with a bit of asthma at the time um, and I was like but I just wanted to um, to do some more things with Dad, because he loved the football, and I liked football too. But I mean, it, it had a cost. I remember one time I, I tackled the person so hard that it was, it was like a ESPN moment where you would say, let's go to the Sports Center highlights. Look at John Barry, he tackles this guy into last Friday. I just crashed into this guy, tackled him, it hit him so hard that my, my thumb is still protruding from the, from the force. Um, but I remember that um, getting to know my father that way, like my sisters knew him as a soccer coach, um, I, I did realize that I had a Catholic father with so many fathers that weren't practicing faith. My father was always in church and he grew up under Irish immigrant parents that were very faithful to church. And, and so, and I saw, I saw him grow in that faith through time and then really all of a sudden just take a leap in his faith. And some of the things that I didn't at first like about my father, all of his socializing and involved in this thing and that thing, um, Jesus was now somehow got into that place. And then he was more available <laughs> to us in the family because Jesus said, you need to love your family a little bit more. And the story is really that he became really pretty awesome at loving and he didn't know how to really say I'm sorry for the things he failed to do before but for me um, it was just one of the joys when I think of the prodigal son story uh, I may not have been some embarrassment coming back home I was usually doing a really good job in the high school and college and I don't think I ever embarrassed my father except the one time I threw a pie in his face because <laughs> I thought he was being too ridiculous I threw a pie in his face in public. Uh, I don't know if I would still not do it if I could go back at the time. It felt good because I had some things up against him. How about you? Have you had some things with your father that you just wanted to throw a pie in his face? <laughs> or did you want something more from your father that you never got? I wanted so much from my father. I, I probably um, wanted everything. It's funny because um, the Lord has now said, you know, I want to give that kind of love of the Father to you. And I gave you a father who actually was a believer. And later, my dad became a Catholic deacon. Um, my dad got called into the ministry the same summer I did. And we both were in, I was in seminary and he was in deacon classes. He was made a deacon in 86. I was made a deacon in 87. <clears throat> so there was Deacon Barry and Deacon Mary for a little while and then there was Father Barry and Deacon Barry. And what a joy it became for me I, when I think of the prodigal son, when he gets all those years with his father after that, um, what a joy that would be uh, for him. And I was thinking I had also some great, uh, some great years with my father, knowing him spiritually. Most of the priests in the diocese did not have a dad that they could really, really talk to and talk about faith and talk about, you know, things of the Holy Spirit and prayer and the Bible. There were a few. I remember like John Ensler's dad, Deacon Clarence Ensler was certainly someone that was like that. And I think of a few people, but I was thinking that, no, I have a pretty special. And uh, so the prodigal son story here on this Wednesday, uh, that's what came out. That's what came out, and a thank you to the Lord uh, for um, for teaching me some father-son lessons. And in the gospel today, the father and the son is the theme, and it's my theme today in talking to you. See you next time.